the nightly business report good evening tonight sri lanka railways makes a major advancement in its ticketing system with the launch of a new online platform designed to make it easier to purchase second and third class train tickets the Minister of Agriculture and Plantation Industries reinstated its fertilizer subsidy program with the objective of alleviating the financial burden on tea cultivators throughout Sri Lanka. The negative sentiment at the Colombo Stock Exchange continues into its second week, with today's trading session concluding the market in decline. And Australian employees can now disregard work emails and calls due to a new right to disconnect law aimed at reducing such intrusions into their personal lives. From Studio 24, here's Anuradhi Vikramasinghe. A very good evening and thank you for joining us. Sri Lanka Railways has introduced a significant development in its ticketing system by launching a new online platform aimed at enhancing the convenience of purchasing second and third class train tickets. The newly unveiled website named Pravesha.lk represents a major advancement in the modernization of the railway ticketing process. Designed to be highly user friendly, Pravesha.lk is accessible from both computers and mobile devices, providing a seamless experience for passengers. The platform offers a straightforward three-step process to purchase train tickets online. Once you have completed your ticket purchase, the system will automatically send your electronic ticket to the mobile phone number or email address that you have provided during the transaction. Each ticket will be uniquely assigned to the specific journey and passenger and will include a separate electronic ticket along with a unique QR code for easy validation. This new digital ticketing system offers several advantages including the ability to receive and store your tickets electronically, thus eliminating the need for physical tickets. The unique QR code simplifies the boarding process, allowing for quicker and more efficient validation of your ticket at the station. The Ministry of Agriculture and Plantation Industries has reinstated its fertilizer subsidy program with the objective of alleviating the financial burden on tea cultivators throughout Sri Lanka. This renewed initiative is designed to address the escalating costs associated with essential agricultural inputs and to support the tea industry, which plays a crucial role in the country's economy. As a part of the revamp subsidy program, the Ministry has implemented a significant price reduction for five specific types of fertilizer that are produced by the state fertilizer company. Under the new pricing structure, the cost of a 50 kg bag of tea fertilizer has been lowered to 4,000 rupees. This substantial reduction in price is aimed at easing the financial strain on tea growers, allowing them to manage their operational costs more efficiently and improve their overall profitability. The types of fertilizer that have been included in this price reduction initiative are the T200, T750, U709, U834 and T65. The subsidy program has been backed by a total investment of 2,400 million rupees which has been fully funded by the Sri Lanka Tea Board. Minister of Agriculture and Plantation Industries Mahind Amaravira emphasized that the entire cost of this program is been covered by the Tea Board ensuring that no government funds are being utilized. This approach reflects a commitment to supporting the tea industry through targeted financial measures while maintaining fiscal responsibility. A leading entrepreneur from the People's Republic of South Korea, Tong Jo Moon, met with Prime Minister Dinesh Gunawardena at the Temple Trees in Colombo recently and expressed willingness to invest in the energy and agriculture sectors. The Prime Minister's media office reported that Yong Jo Moon, President of the International Interchange Development Association, expressed interest in investing in various solar energy projects and fruit cultivation in Sri Lanka for export to Korea and other nations. The Prime Minister welcomed these investment opportunities, highlighting the government's intention to boost the use of alternative energy sources and reduce reliance on crude oil. Discussions also covered potential investments in the fisheries, health and construction sectors with focus on introducing new technologies and enhanced production in these fields. Venerable Veda Anande Jinratanathera joined the Korean delegation which included Yong Jo Moon, Mung Soo Jong, Lak Priyatu Korala and Sudharma Kuratunga. MP Yada Mani Gunavardhana Additional Secretary Mahinda Gunaratna and advisor Sugiswara Senadira also participated in the talks. 
The Hambantar International Port has experienced a substantial increase in volumes, with a 40% growth recorded this year to date. The port's commercial and marketing division says the growth is expected to reach 50% by the year end. The impressive performance and strategic growth of the port in 2024 demonstrates the Hambantar International Port Group's expertise in networking and marketing, managing port operations, as well as the HIP's ability to effectively handle rising volumes. This achievement not only showcases the port's effectiveness, but the HIPG's commitment to its continuous development in terms of increased efficiencies, strategic investments in infrastructure and services. Significant growth has been noted in gas, marine services and container segments, solidifying Hambantota Port's position as a key player in the maritime market. Sri Lanka Tourism Promotion Bureau, in collaboration with the Sri Lankan Embassy in Seoul, South Korea, arranged a warm welcome for the JTBC Media Group, which is a popular media group in South Korea, which caters to all audiences and has a wide media coverage across the world. The group, consisting of eight members, recently arrived in Sri Lanka for a tour in order to promote the main attractions, culture and cuisine of the country. They were warmly welcomed at the Bandaranaik International Airport on their arrival by the TIC officials and the Sri Lankan Tourism Promotion Bureau and also received souvenirs as a memory of their visit. They also selected Sri Lanka this time in order to capture beauty shots of the island for their new reality program, Extreme Tour, which includes a popular Korean celebrity talking to the audience on a tour of a new destination. It was launched recently and hopes to release their latest episode on Sri Lanka next month. JTBC is Korea's leading TV channel which was founded in 1963 and has gained worldwide recognition, producing programs such as Newsroom and Morning and Crime Chief. This promotional effort done by the JTBC Media Group and SLTPB will convey Sri Lanka's uniqueness as a travel destination across the world and attract more Korean tourists to the country. Let's take a short commercial break now. Updates from the stock market right after this. This is the Nightly Business Report. Welcome back to the Nightly Business Report. The negative sentiment at the Colombo Stock Exchange has persisted into its second week as trading commenced today with the market ending on a downturn. Both the All Share Price Index and the S&P SL20 Index continued their downward trajectory, extending the ongoing negative streak. For a detailed summary of today's market performance, we now turn to Anjali Matthews from First Capital Holdings. Thank you. Today, the Colombo Stock Exchange experienced a significant downturn, continuing the downward trends of the previous sessions, and the market experienced increased uncertainty and volatility amidst bearish investor sentiment. The All Share Price Index reached its lowest levels since March 2024 this year, closing at 11,200, losing 162 points and marking a 1.4% decline from the previous day. And similarly, the S&P SL20 index also experienced a sharp decline, closing at 3,189, losing 65 points from the previous day and marking a 2% decrease from the previous day. As investors maintained a cautionary stance amidst political uncertainty, the main negative contributors towards the All Share Price Index were Commercial Bank, Hatton National Bank, LOLC Finance, John Keels Holdings, and Sampath Bank. And as low sentiment persisted, turnover stood at Rs 554.3 million, marking a 55% decrease from the previous day. The top gainers of the day include Industrial Asphalts, Tess Agro, and EML Consultants, while the top losers of the day include Waskarua Beach Resort, Asia Asset Finance, and Exterminators PLC. Will this negative streak continue into the upcoming week or will there be a turnaround? To get the forecast for the days ahead, we now connect with Demantha Matthews from First Capital Holdings. Thanks. So the market saw a sizable decline today and going forward also we think uh, that kind of a uh, selling pressure uh, is likely to be there uh, going forward as well 
uh, investors seem to be uncertain due to the current uh, environment uh, that is there in the market with the uh, political and policy level uncertainty uh, that has uh, arisen. So uh, with that uh, we saw earnings uh, being released over the last two weeks and the results of most companies have been very strong. However, despite uh, those results the market did not uh, really react uh, for those results and uh, with the uncertainty market has been having a bit of selling pressure so going forward also we think uh, turnover levels are likely to be slightly on to the uh, lower side uh, though uh, this is also the month end week uh, uh, rather than the month end uh, there is likely to be a bit of selling pressure because of the uncertainty uh, that is there in the market however note that there could be uh, bargain hunters who will on and off uh, come into the market when prices are very attractive uh, making the index a bit uh, volatile. Gold prices fell slightly in Asian trade today but remained in sight of record highs last week as a prospect of lower U.S. interest rates battered the dollar and presented a higher outlook for metal markets. Spot gold fell 0.1% to $2,509.88 an ounce, while gold futures expiring in December fell 0.1% to $2,545.10 an ounce. Spot prices hit a record high of $2,532.00 and five cents an ounce just last week. Gains in the yellow metal came as the dollar sank to a 13-month low amid growing conviction that the Fed will begin trimming rates in September. The prospect of lower rate boards will for gold and other precious metals given that it reduces the opportunity cost of investing in non-yielding assets. Oil prices rose in Asian trade today, extending a rebound from the prior session as media reports showed no progress towards an Israel-Hamas ceasefire while hostilities in the region persisted. Brent oil futures expiring in October rose 0.8% to $79.59 a barrel, while West Texas Intermediate crude futures rose 0.6% to $75.45 a barrel. Oil markets were also buoyed by optimism over lower U.S. interest rates after comments from Federal Reserve Chair Jerome Powell cemented expectations for a September cut. Persistent instability in the Middle East saw traders attach some risk premium to oil, amid bets that a spillover of the israel Hamas conflict could destabilize oil production in the crude-rich region. The Sri Lankan rupee has appreciated slightly against the US dollar at commercial banks in Sri Lanka today compared to last week. At commercial bank, the buying rate has reduced from 295 rupees and 43 cents to 294 rupees and 19 cents, while the selling rate has dropped from 305 rupees and 25 cents to 304 rupees. Here's an update on the other currency rates. short break now this is the nightly business report welcome back to the nightly business report Pro Food, Pro Pack, Agbiz and Knowledge Hub 2024 exhibition organized by the Sri Lanka Food Processors Association together with Lanka Exhibition and Conference Services kicked off on the 23rd of August in Colombo. The most eagerly awaited food industry exhibition was held until yesterday at the Sirimavu Bandaranaika Exhibition and Convention Center. The event was proudly endorsed and supported by the Minister of Industries, the National Agribusiness Council and the Institute of Food Science and Technology in Sri Lanka. SLFPA's commitment to promoting the advancement of the food industry and driving economic growth in Sri Lanka through this exhibition had been well known over the years. 
The event acted as a catalyst in bringing together food industry leaders, various stakeholders and decision makers for agri-based companies, food processing industries, packaging and all service providers to the food industry. Exhibiting at ProFood ProPack Agribiz and Knowledge Hub 2024 offered SMEs unparalleled opportunities to expand their reach, increase brand visibility and forge strategic partnerships by engaging with key stakeholders and accessing a pool of buyers and investors. The exhibition acted as a catalyst for overall development of the food processing industry, creating diverse business opportunities and boosting investment and exports. Ceylon Bank's Signfluencer campaign aimed at empowering the hearing and visually impaired made a significant impact at its launch by spotlighting the need to acknowledge those who are hard of hearing. As a catalyst for growth, the next phase of Ceylon Bank's campaign will lend its support to the Ceylon School for the Deaf and Blind in Rakhmalana. The goal was to empower the school's visually impaired students by enhancing their computer literary skills. To this end, Ceylon Bank will pave the way, funding instructors and educators in the field. The effort underscores the potential for all communities, including the deaf and blind, to aspire to greatness. Australia's United Petroleum plans to set up a food manufacturing venture in Sri Lanka with an investment of 20 to 30 million US dollars to produce pies and other convenience food items under Australia's iconic pie brand, Pie Face. The location of the proposed food manufacturing plant is yet to be finalised, but however officials noted that it would be located in a board of investment zone as the company plans to export 80% of the production targeting exports market such as India, Malaysia, Singapore, South Africa and the Middle East region. Under this project, UPL would relocate one out of its four factories in Australia to Sri Lanka, mainly to reduce high logistic costs from Australia to Europe and Asia. Once into operations, the plant is expected to produce 15,000 units of pies and other convenience food items per minute. Under Pie Face brand, United Petroleum produced a market range of award-winning French-style pies and other convenience food items made using only premium ingredients. In particular, United Petroleum through this venture in Sri Lanka is eyeing to enter the Indian market. In addition, UPL is also expected to make a sizable investment in establishing 50 new fuel stations as a mixed development project in Sri Lanka. UPL Lanka CEO noted that UPL is considering convert these ventures into a full-scale convenience centres that may include apartment complexes and other real estate-related developments. He added that they are already identified more than 70 properties to establish their new fuel stations and convert all into full-scale convenience centres, possibly including property developments such as apartment, food and entertainment zones. Deloitte Sri Lanka proudly announced its recent accreditations as an approved employer for professional and trainee development by the Association of Chartered Certified Accountants, also known as ACCA. This prestigious recognition acknowledges organizations that demonstrate high standards in employee training and development, aligning with ACCA's global benchmarks for excellence in learning and professional growth. As an ACCA-approved employer, Deloitte Sri Lanka will benefit from various advantages including opportunities to access exclusive ACCA resources and enhanced support for employee development programs. Mr. Vajira Lakdeva, the partner for audit at Deloitte Sri Lanka, stated that they are, an, they are honoured to receive this accreditation from the ACCA and this recognition is a significant milestone, reinforcing their commitment to providing exceptional training and development opportunities for its employees. <music> Let's take a short commercial break. This is the Nightly Business Report. Welcome back to the Nightly Business Report. Asian stocks were a mixed bag today, taking some support from expectations of lower U.S. interest rates. Although Japanese markets retreated amid pressure from the yen and bets on rate hikes by the Bank of Japan. Hong Kong's Hang Seng Index rose nearly 0.8%, recovering a measure of steep losses from the prior session and also ducking losses in mainland Chinese markets. China's Shanghai Shenzhen CCI 300 and Shanghai Composite Indexes fell, weighed by persistent concerns over a slowing economic recovery. South Korea's Kospi was flat, pressured by some losses in major chip-making stocks ahead of NVIDIA's results. 
Australia's employees can now ignore work emails and calls thanks to a new right to disconnect law designed to curb those and other intrusions into personal lives. The new rule which came into force today means employees in most cases cannot be punished for refusing to read or respond to contacts from their employers outside work hours. In Australia, workers are now legally protected if they ignore their bosses after work hours. A new right to disconnect law came into force on Monday, designed to protect their personal time from work emails and calls. The rule ensures that employees, in most cases, cannot be punished for refusing to read or respond to contact from their employers outside of working hours. And for bosses or companies that insist, authorities can intervene and even slap them with a several thousand dollar fine. Supporters argue the law gives workers the confidence to stand up against the steady invasion of their personal lives by work emails, texts and calls. Australians worked on average 281 hours of unpaid overtime in 2023, according to a survey by the Australia Institute think tank. They valued that time as worth some 88 billion US dollars. With this law, Australia joins about two dozen countries with similar protections, including France, which introduced its own regulations in 2017. While the law aims to support better work-life balance, it also recognises the need for emergency contact, allowing employers to contact staff when necessary. Nestle shares tumbled early on Friday following the abrupt departure of CEO Mark Schneider from the world's biggest food maker and his replacement by company veteran Lauren Frazee. Nestle shares tumbled 4% early Friday. Investors were spooked by the sudden departure of CEO Mark Schneider from the world's biggest food maker. The surprise exit was announced late Thursday following a board meeting that ended his near eight-year reign. Investor confidence in Schneider had waned over the last 15 months, but markets were still shaken by his exit. The company's shares have been on a downward slide since May last year after a series of mishaps, earnings misses and guidance downgrades. Nestle has trailed rivals like Danone and Unilever in recent quarters and critics say the firm has been too reliant on price rises. They argue this has hit sales volumes as cash-strapped customers turn to cheaper brands. Schneider is replaced by 62-year-old company veteran Laurent Frex. He faces rebuilding market share and increasing sales volumes in a tough market. The new CEO immediately pledged to focus Nestle on organic growth rather than acquisitions. Frex led Nestle's European business in the wake of the global financial crisis. Most recently, he was head of the firm's Latin America zone, which saw strong growth on his watch. And that marks the end of the first bulletin of the Nightly Business Report for this week. We'll see you again tomorrow with the latest happenings across the business globe. Until then, I'm Anradi Vikramasinghe. Thank you for watching. Have a great night.